I want y'all to understand something, man. We wonder why that our kids are dying. It's probably from what we supplying. Straight like that. At 11 years old, man, my daddy was so drunk, he was falling asleep with a cigarette in his hand. What y'all think I was doing with that cigarette? <laughs> I was putting it out at first, but then I started grabbing that cigarette, smoking it. My daddy was falling asleep watching porn. I didn't turn it off on watching it too. Okay. <laughs> At age 13 years old, man, I was already smoking. At age 14, I got introduced into a game called Black Disciples. I wanted to be a black disciple so bad, but I was a white boy. And I'm from Antoine, Minnesota, 5300, Candlewood Glen. Born and raised 16 years. Same project, same apartment. I remember having little lines on the wall when I was 9, 10, 13, 14, 16, stuff like that. Me getting older and older in the same, same house, same wall. When I was 14 years old, my daddy had a stroke. I started staying home with my daddy. One day I came home, I was smelling like weed. I thought my daddy was going to get on me, but instead he was like, hey man, where's it at? We with the pills, pills with the cocaine, cocaine with the embalming fluid, embalming fluid went to drink, went to everything. We were just doing our thing. Every time my daddy got a social security to, um, go home, money every month, it was going down. We was having a big old party. But the problem when I was real young, I didn't know no better. By 16 years old, I finally got put down with the gangs. It wasn't Black Disciples, it was Gangster Disciples, GDs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If anybody know what Gangster Disciples is, a lot of people know what Crips is, a lot of people know what Bloods is. I was a GD, I was a Gangster Disciple. 16 years old, man. I was on the south side, I stole the vehicle with my homeboys. It was me and four other black guys. Guess who stood out? <laughs> this white boy, huh? <laughs> 16 years old, man, running from the laws, man. All the laws ran after me. Yeah. They slammed me right on my face. Scraped my whole face up. I went to juvenile, 16 years old. I got out for a parent pickup. 17 years old, man. I remember working at Willowbrook Mall. I was working at Great American Cookie Company, making cookies, cheesecakes. <laughs> I was getting paid so low. I was embarrassed by the money I was making, so I started back selling drugs. I caught a delivery charge at 17 years old and went to prison. Remember, I was telling you about my father beating my mother. My father and my mom was beautiful people. I loved my mother and my father. I loved them to death. They was great parents, but alcohol got put involved in our situation, and it changed my daddy. My daddy was a different man when he was on alcohol. He was a different person. He wasn't the same. When I went to prison, man, I remember my, my mother used to come see me once a month. Once a month. You know why? Because she just couldn't bear the fact of seeing her son in all white in prison. She just couldn't. She cried all the time, y'all. I remember my mama had to get escorted out of Guards East Unit. She couldn't stand them taking me back to my dorm. I got out of jail. Guess what happened? I went right back to the streets, right back to the same crowd, same people. I was always in competition. I was around a crew called ABN, with Trade the Truth, Zero, the major rappers, and I was in competition with them, trying to be just like them. Plugged in with all the GDs, trying to be just like them. I met my wife. She's at work right now. She wanted to be here. I have my son. Where my son Jojo at? I don't know where Jojo is, but y'all seen him up here earlier. It's my baby. Say what's up, Jojo. What's up, Jojo? Say what's up, Jojo? What's up, Jojo? Get out of my face. Huh? It's my baby. I love him to death, man. I was 19 years old. Well, my son came aboard, man. So now I done put my son in the situation, coming into this world, me not having no money, me not understanding, me having sex, unprotected sex, getting them pregnant, young, no foundation, no nothing, bringing a child in this world with negativity. At 20 years old, man, I caught another case. I was beating my wife, and the next door neighbors called the laws on me. We got in a heated argument. 
One thing led to another, I put my hands on her. The laws got called. I got caught with a whole bunch of drugs, a whole bunch of cocaine, a whole bunch of pills, a whole bunch of ecstasy, a whole bunch of marijuana, a bunch of scales. They found a whole bunch of pictures of guns. The feds got involved. It was crazy. I remember going to jail, y'all. And I want y'all to pay attention. I remember going to jail. The first thing I did was call my daddy and said, Daddy, don't tell mama I'm in jail. Don't tell her I'm in jail. I'm going to break her heart. Don't let her know. And he said, son, I already told her. I'm trying to get your bond. Your bond's $75,000. We're trying to bond you out right now. I'm like, daddy, why did you tell mama that, man? Three weeks, I tried to call my mama on a collect call. Three weeks, I'm blowing her up. She ain't accepting that collect call. She's mad at me. She's upset that I went back to jail. She ain't want nothing to do with me. So one day, I couldn't get in contact with my, with my mother, so I called a friend of mine's. And I was so happy when he accepted that call. I don't know if anybody been in jail out here, but I think there's a bunch of people that have been in jail in here. You know, when you say, when it says thank you, you know, you got that collect call accepted. I was just so happy. So my partner picked up, his name was Dion, and I was like, man, what's good, bro? What's happening, bro? And he was just down. He was just sad. And I knew something was wrong. He wanted to tell me. So I kept at him. Bro, what's up, man? What's happening, man? And he said, Pyrex, your mama just died. Pyrex, your mama just died. I'm sitting in the county jail facing 30 years behind all these drugs. And my mother just died. And it broke my heart. I lost all my faith. I hit the floor and I was crying. I was embarrassed about a lot of things in my life. I didn't get to go to the funeral. I didn't get to go pay my respects to my mother. I was angry with God. I was mad at God. I was like, my daddy is alive and my mother is gone. My daddy is a cheater, a beater. He was a stiller. He was everything and he's alive. And my mother was, was pure. My mother was happy. My mother loved on us. My mother kept a relationship because of me and my brother. My mother never left my father, but she's dead. I was very hurt. For three years, I was in prison. Three years, I stopped believing in God. I didn't read my Bible. I didn't go to prayer calls. I didn't do none of that. I was fighting. I tatted my whole body up. I didn't care about nothing, nothing. Nothing. I was fighting. I was plugged all the way in with the GDs, man, in the penitentiary. I was fighting real tough out there. I was running a whole unit as a white boy. I'm fighting the white boys because they talking about he ain't no white boy. I'm fighting the black dudes because they trying to make sure that my heart is tough enough. So I'm going through it. I'm going through it. That 30 years I didn't get, but I got 10 year sentences, man, three of them. Three 10 year sentences. I remember one day, they had a big old concert, y'all. A big old concert at Clemens Unit. Anybody know what Clemens Unit is? Yeah. You know what Clemens, Clemens yeah. Unit? They had a big old concert, something like this, for the prisoners. And I remember like, man, it was a three day thing. And I remember I was like, dang, I wanna go to this, but my pride is stopping me. But they said it was a hip hop concert. And I seen this white boy on a poster. And I was like, dang. I wonder if he got something. But I bet I rap harder. <laughs> Always competition. Always competition. That's all I had in my mind. But the first day I didn't go. And the brother that was on that poster, he kept hearing about somebody named Pyrex. People was like, oh man, there's a white boy named Pyrex. He be rapping. He be rapping with ABN and Trade the Truth and all that. So it just so happened this, this, this white guy that was a performer there decided to go walk the, the runs in the prison. And he walked right up on me. He was like, hey, ain't you Pyrex? And I was like, yeah. He said, I've been hearing a lot about you. He started talking to me. 
He invited me to the thing the following day. So I went. When I seen this concert like this, at first I thought it was corny. There's a lot of people out here that probably think Christian hip hop is corny. Gospel rap is corny. It's like, it's not, it's not cool enough. It's not hip enough. When I saw these guys do what they do, I was impressed. I was excited. I liked it. I was bobbing my head to it. I was a little bit at a time allowing pride to come out of my pocket so I could throw it away. Now this guy, the white guy that was on this poster, his name is Trey Nine. This guy Trey Nine started writing me after he left his concert. He started sewing into my life by just sharing his story with me. Letting me know, know about his new wife and what they was doing out there in Fifth Ward and all this stuff that they had going on. Then he started asking me questions like, why are you so angry with God, Pyrex? Why are you so upset? Why are you so mad? And I was like, you know, I don't believe in God type stuff. I don't believe in none of that. And you know, he, you know, he was very smart about things. You know, how can you believe in something that you don't like? Something that you hate? How can you hate something you don't like? How can you hate something that you don't believe in? So he saw, I started telling him the story of my mother and my father and me growing up in Angus home on Antoine and the Soto. And he was like, so your mother died of what now, Pyrex? And I said, my mother died of cancer. And he says, do you know that the devil brought diseases in this world? The devil brought sin into this world. My mother died of a disease that the devil brought in this world. And when I started getting open in the scripture and started understanding things, I started rebuilding my life with Jesus. It wasn't even a couple months later I got out of jail, y'all. I made parole. I had a choice to go with Trey the Truth or go with Trey Nine and that old hip hop hope stuff. What y'all think I did when I got out of jail? Go with Trey Nine. Go with Trey Nine? Trey the Truth. I went with Trey the Truth. I got out and went to Trey the Truth. I turned my back on Trey Nine. I turned my back on people that was helping me. Everybody like, you see all these people that's out here that's helping people? All these people out here helping people with clothes and, and face paint and food. Miss Jennifer, everybody that's out here that's helping. I got all the help I wanted from them as much as I can. Manipulation. And then right when I was cool, I turned my back on everybody. And I walked away. But a real Christian didn't give up on me. Come on. A real Christian did not give up on me and say, hey, wipe his hands with me. He kept coming. Amen. He kept coming. He kept texting me. And I'm like, dude, I don't want to talk to you, man. Why are you texting me, bro? Why are you texting me, bro? Why are you texting me? I'm fine. I'm good. I'm making money. Why are you texting me? It wasn't even about eight months later, man, I got in tune with Trey. And I ain't talking about Trey now, and I got in tune with Trey the Truth. And I left ABN. I left the whole squad. I left everybody. I went right back to the streets. I went right back to my homeboys. I did a song called I'm Back. I did a, a song called Connected. I went on tour with Twister. I went out there to Atlanta with Bubba Sparks. I had moved to Florida with my sister Joy. I did a lot of things in my life. And I kept going back and forth to jail. Possession after possession. Xanax after Xanax. Losing my life, tripping. One day, I was going to a strip club, y'all. I was gonna go serve some handlebars to a girl out there on West New York on 45. <laughs> I went into this strip club, y'all. And when I tell y'all, man, that things wasn't going the way I planned them. I got pulled over and I got caught with some syrup. Shout out my brother third. I see you, baby. I see you. I'm going to tell y'all something, man. I'm going to tell y'all a story soon, man. But listen, I sit down. And when I tell y'all, man, I got pulled over and got caught with this drink and these pills, I went to jail. I hit the third floor. And guess who was the chaplain on the third floor? Trey Nine. That white boy, Trey Nine. Something about that white boy, Trey Nine, man. 
He could have been, I could have been on any floor in the Harris County Jail, but I wasn't. I was on the third floor where God put me at. Trey Nine came into the dorm, told the um, detention officer, I need this brother right here. I need him to come to church. So he took me to church. And when I was in there, man, he brought somebody named Sonic. He was all tatted up, gangster, been to jail, did so long, a bunch of felonies. And I was able to relate to this brother. I was able to relate to a lot of things in my life with his life. And right then and there, I broke down. I started crying and I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Amen. The best decision I ever made, y'all. Yes, sir. And I don't know if y'all understand, this was two years ago, man. But it was the best decision I ever made in my life. Look, look two years from now, where I'm at. I'm standing on the stage talking to y'all. So listen, I didn't know I was going to get out of jail when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I didn't know that. All I know, I was facing 25 to life. All of a sudden, when I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, man, I walked out that church, that chaplaincy, and I was going back to the dorm, and this little light came onto my head, and it was just screaming at me, saying, Lil Flip, Lil Flip. And I don't know if y'all know who Lil Flip is, but he's a rapper. He's a Houston rapper. Well, anyway, this guy Lil Flip had my prescription for the drugs I got caught with. I remember sending him my prescription because he had called a drink case and wanted to know my doctors. He sent my prescription to my brother. My brother sent it to my attorney. Attorney sent it to the DA and I beat my charge. Now I'm going to tell y'all something. I don't believe in coincidences. But I believe that God had lined that up for me. He knew I was going to jail a year when I gave that stuff to Lil Flip. He knew I was going to jail. He knew that Lil Flip was going to have the prescription. He knew that Trey Nine was going to bring me out on, out the third floor into the um, into the chaplaincy. He knew that Trey was going to be able to have somebody with him as a vessel of the kingdom that's going to be able to push me. He knew everything. He lined everything up. A, B, C, D. I got out of jail, y'all, and I plugged into the body of Christ. Matthew, come here. I got out of jail, and I started staying focused. I got out of jail. And I stopped making excuses. A lot of people make excuses out here. And I'm going to be real with y'all. Because see, Pyrex made excuses all the time. Pyrex made many excuses. So listen, y'all. Every Tuesday, we got Hip Hop Hope Fifth Ward. Every Tuesday, we have it out here. Right behind y'all on, on what I think is um, On The Tracks Ministries, something like that. On right Track. There. On, on track. track Ministries. I remember, y'all. October, and I need y'all to pay attention. October 4th, 2015, I went to SeaWorld. I took my wife out there. I took my kids out there. I took the ministry kids out there, man. We was having a good old time for my son's birthday party. He wanted to go see Shamu, that big old whale. Well, you know, I went to go see the big old whale. If y'all check the IG, I was all on the thing. It was going down. But later on that night, man, we decided to go to a haunted house. <laughs> I really didn't want to go in this haunted house, y'all. But I went to this haunted house anyway because my son wanted to go. We wanted to have a good time. You know, I went in there. The end result of me going in there, I ended up hitting two employees. And I called a case, assault causing bodily injury. I couldn't believe it happened. I, I couldn't believe I was going to jail for assaulting somebody just that quick. And I'm a believer. I come out here every Tuesday. I had on my business. I plug into the church. But there was a reason why I had to go to jail. Do y'all know the story about Acts? Saul to Paul? Yes, sir. Saul going to jail? I know my brother Third knows it. Yes, sir. We had Bible study on it. Let me tell y'all something, man. When I went into the county jail on these charges, they hit me on the seventh floor. Now, I couldn't believe they was hitting me on the seventh floor rock and rolling. I was like, oh, Lord Jesus. I called Trey Nine. I said, Trey Nine, man, they done put me on the gladiator floor. 
Oh my God, I'm about to be squabbing. I ain't got, my mind ain't right. I got a temper problem. Lord, I, you got to know somebody, Trey Nine. You got to know somebody. Somebody got to get me out of here, man. I Sit me on the second floor or something. Why y'all got me on the seventh? You see what I'm saying? But guess what? There was a reason. There was a reason behind everything, man. I went in there. First thing I started seeing that they was having Bible study. They was having prayer calls. So I knew that the Holy Spirit was filling this tank. But it just, it was missing something. It was missing love. The foundation. It was missing love. First John 4, 19. We love because he first loved us. Amen. But I knew that my, I knew what I had to do was Matthew 28, 19 through 20, man. Therefore, go. Make disciples. Make disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And teach them to obey His commands, not our commands. So when I went in there, man, I remember seeing somebody. He came in. He was strung out on drugs. He was high. And, and all I could think about was me as Trey Nine. But in a different manner. And so I seen his brother, hair all on his head, looking real skinny. You know, just rough. You know, that's how it is sometimes, man, when you're strung out on drugs. Maybe there's somebody right now that's strung out on drugs that's know what I'm talking about. But anyways, man, I walked into this. I mean, I seen this guy come in. I asked him what his name was. I told him my story. I invited him to pray a call later on that night. And I left. But God was tugging on my heart and says, now, turn back around. Talk to him. His name is Matthew. How you doing, Matthew? You good? It's my brother. Say, what's up, Matthew? What's up, Matthew? Right then and there, man, I started talking to him. I started sharing my story again. But this time, I included something what we call this is a three circles method. Yes, sir. I was letting them know about a broken world. But I also was letting them know about God's perfect design and how he had it. But because of sin was broken, we broke that God's perfect design. But God sent his only begotten son to save us. And only through his son, Jesus Christ, could you get back to God's perfect design. You had to first admit that you a sinner. Then you have to believe that Jesus died on the cross for our sins and rose after the third day. And then you have to confess, not with my mouth, but with your mouth, that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior and you will be saved. My brother Matthew said that prayer and he accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. After that, I set him down on the toilet and I cut his hair. Then I gave him some shampoo and my shower slides and some soap. I told him to go take a good shower. And then I told him afterward, let's drink some coffee and let's fellowship. Let's open this word up. And then we're going to eat something. And for 30 days, I discipled this brother. And when I got out of jail, I beat my case. And when I got out of jail, God kept telling me to pull on this brother. So I made sure he had my number. He was calling me on collect calls. He got out. But guess what he got out on, resident? He had to come out on an ankle monitor. But he had nowhere to go, so he had to go to Ben Reed. He had to get an address. But God told me to move him in my house. Said, Pyrex, move this brother in your house. He has nowhere to go. He needs a new start. Move him in my house. So I moved him in a two bedroom house, one bath, and he was sleeping on my couch. For how many days? About three or four days? He was sleeping on my couch about three or four days, man. He was excited. He wasn't tripping on sleeping on my couch. He wasn't worried about any of those things, man. All he knew that he was out and that he was better than himself and he was going to try to rebuild his relationship with his family, his kids. Not even four days later, y'all, God blessed me with a four-bedroom house. A two-bedroom, I mean a two-bath, two-car garage. Guess what? Matthew now has a bed. He now has a room. He is now focused. He starts work next week. He's handling his business. He's staying focused. And guess what he did? He plugged into the body of Christ. 
And I'm gonna tell y'all, I want y'all to give a round of applause to my brother Matthew. Because we all need help. We all need to let our pride down and help somebody. Everybody out here that's a volunteer, God should be tugging at your heart to go find somebody that's less fortunate than you and help them. I got a brother named Third that just came. What's up, baby? How you been? How you doing? Seen pictures of you. How you doing? This is my brother Third. He was my next door celly in the Harris County Jail on the seventh floor. He spent those 30 days with me. He's now out on probation from things that he did in his past. But guess what? That's just in your past, Third. That don't dictate your future, brother. And you know that. And you a strong brother. And what's the first thing I told you when you get out what you should do? Plug in. Plug into the body of Christ. Plug into outreach programs, evangelism, man. Plug in. This is what we do. This is not a fifth ward. We do this in Homestead. We do this in Spring Branch. We do this in A-Leaf. We do this in Brookshire. We don't play. We handle God's business, man. And we love on everybody. We love on brothers. We even have a radio station. It's called Eyes on Me. Eyes on, I mean, Eyes, Eyes on Me Radio. Every Wednesday, 11 p.m., and we reach out to the people in prison. Because in Hebrews, ain't it Hebrews? 13.3. 13.3. Don't forget the ones in prison, y'all. And Trey Nine did it. <laughs> and Trey Nine went a sheep amongst wolves and found a, a person of peace. And look what I've done. <laughs> and now I found somebody that's a person of peace that can go back to his hood once he handle his business off that ankle monitor. And once he's ready and he sharpens each other. Because see, Proverbs 27, 17, like my brother Trevor song says, Y'all check on his kids, y'all. Check on his kids. Iron sharpens iron. How long you been out of jail? About a month. He been out of jail about a month. And God has reconciled his relationship with his baby mother. Amen. And now his two kids are here. His Amen. daughter, his son. God is amazing, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Give a round of applause for God, man. God has healed many things. He has healed many things. And he's healed many things in my life. And it all started when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And right now, man, turn that down real quick, DJ. Right now, man, all my volunteers that's out here, man, I need y'all to pay attention. I'm going to give y'all an opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior just like I did. Romans 10, 9 through 10 states, if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you shall be saved. I got a song that I made it a little easier for people to understand. And it's ABC. And a lot of the kids, you know, they listen to the music. And they love the music. They love it so much that they understand the music and then they able to use it. So when they go out there in the streets, they, they want to share the gospel. But they can't remember the steps. <laughs> and so they, they remember my song, ABC. First off, you a sinner gonna admit that you just did step A. Then gonna believe Jesus died and rose for your sin, that's B. Finally confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and Savior, and that's C. It's just that easy, you ain't got to dream, it's just ABC, and that's free. Yes, I'm a sinner, yes, I'm a beginner, but still I'm a winner. Woo, woo. How you admit it, that grab a pen and pat and ate it for dinner? Uh -huh. No more shipping cracking, now I'm giving back, I'm not a pretender. Right. I was once an offender, but not a repenter, you know that I'm about that. Oh, love, man. Right. Listen, man. If you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, all you got to do is just bow your heads with me. Everybody bow your heads. Everybody bow your heads. Close your eyes. 
When we get done with this, man, we're going to play more music. We're going to have more fun. There's more food. There's more games. We're going to do a lot of things. We're painting this truck behind us. We're going to let the kids get involved. There's so much things happening today. It's a beautiful Saturday, man. Thank you, Jesus, for today and Fifth Ward. Thank you. I know the Holy Spirit is just flowing through people's heart right now. So as we bow our heads right now, Lord, we're going to ask you to move into these brothers and these sisters' lives right now, Lord, and let them feel convicted of their ways and what they're doing, Lord. And all you have to do, everybody, if you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, just lift your hands up. Ain't nobody looking. Everybody got their eyes closed, their heads bowed. Volunteers, if you see them, just grab them. Just grab them. Everybody close your eyes. Bow your head.